Growing up Jewish in Allentown, Pennsylvania was a recipe for an existential identity crisis. I was the only Jewish student in my elementary school. So every year around the holidays, the teacher would make me go through this completely humiliating ritual where I had to represent all of world Jewry <laughs> and tell the story of Hanukkah, which is very difficult to make exciting. And the light, the, the oil in the lamp that was only supposed to last for like one night lasted for eight nights. And that's the miracle of Hanukkah? I was raised by my grandparents, and my bubby Sylvia always used to say to me, we're cardiac Jews, which was, was meant basically that we weren't religious, but that we were Jewish in our heart. <laughs> But to make things even more confusing, every year on the high holidays, my grandparents would schlep me to the most orthodox synagogue in southeastern Pennsylvania. I guess they were like nostalgic for their childhoods. And uh, my grandmother would be like, Baruch Adonai. And all the services were in Hebrew, and I had no idea what was going on. My grandparents also spoke fluent Yiddish. And I never understood also what was going on. When I asked my grandmother what she was saying, she'd be like, why would I tell you? We use it to talk about you, to your face. Being the only Jewish kid in my school district um, also made me a target for conversion. There were so many times I'd come home and cry to my grandmother. Becky Smith said, if I don't accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I'm going to go to hell. And she said, ah, don't worry about it. I hear the goyim get double points for converting the Jews. <laughs> so this was my childhood. It was this weird combination between being the other on one hand and then just not getting it when it came to Jews, Judaism, the religion, the culture, any of it. And I wanted to understand it. I gave up the search in my adolescence because drugs. <laughs> But then when I got to college, I kind of started to rekindle that desire to understand my Jewish identity. So I had the opportunity to go to Israel, and I jumped on it. And I had these absurdly high expectations for this trip. I think I thought that I was going to have this like profound aha moment at Sinai and you know, just really just jump into my Jewish identity with both feet. So I had done my research. And there is a hostel in the north of Israel in the town of Sfat, which is actually the birthplace of Jewish mysticism. And I thought, that sounded pretty cool. And this hostel uh, was called Ascent. And the thing about Ascent was you could actually stay there for free. But nothing actually really comes for free. There was a catch. You had to attend their required religious programming. I was pretty broke at the time. I was like, this sounds like a good deal. And as some background, you should know that this particular community of Orthodox Jews, like, well, first of all, Jews never proselytize to non-Jews, right? You know how hard it is to convert to Judaism. But this particular group of Orthodox Jews, like, when they heard of, like, a secular American Jew who was coming to their neighborhood, like, they freaked out. You know, they wanted to, you know, get us involved in their way of life. So I get to this hostel. And I'm greeted with great fanfare. And the first thing the rabbi does is usher me into this room and sits me in front of a computer. And he asks me for my name and my date of birth. And he runs it through this computer program where he's like cross-referencing it with the Torah portion on the day I was born. And then, and then my name with like mystical secret codes in the Torah and like spit out some kind of strange Jewish astrology. And this seemed like an odd welcome to me. I didn't quite get it. I don't know if they were trying to show me that they were like mystical and high tech at the same time. <laughs> and they made us go to these classes with like the most painful names. Like, I don't know where they came up with these. Like, Torah Caffeine, Boost Your Soul. <laughs> and, 
And there'd be these, you know, secular students arguing at the rabbis, like, how could the world have been created only 5,700 and something years ago? What about the dinosaurs and carbon dating? And the rabbis would say, well, the Torah tells us when the universe was created. Science speculates about it. And I was like, this is so up in the head. You know, I'm looking for this heart connection, you know, and it's like not happening. Then they pair me up with what was called a mentor, which is like a woman living in the community so I could get to know what it was like to live this way of life. And her name was Sarah, and she was just a couple years older than me, um, but she had like five kids under the age of three. Like, I didn't even know how that was possible. Like, maybe they were, there were some twins, I don't know. And she's telling me about her way of, like, she came from New Jersey and she found her meaning and purpose with this community and she's loved it ever since. And I'm really trying to pay attention to what she's saying, but she's like nursing a baby whilst chopping carrots for the Shabbat dinner. And there's this smell of dirty diapers just kind of hanging low level <laughs> right in the air. And all of these toddlers, or so many toddlers, were screaming. And I. I thought to myself, you know, I have mad respect for this way of life, but I don't even know if I want kids. I can't cook worth a damn. And I don't even think I like kids. So I get home from Israel and I'm really depressed. Like I never had my aha moment of like, ah, now I know what it means to be a Jew. And I get home and I'm like really bored and depressed one night and I'm wandering in the Barnes and Noble. And I find myself in the religious studies area. And to get to the Judaica section, you got to go through the Eastern religion section. And so I'm walking through the Eastern religion section, and I'm looking at the titles, and I see this book called Insight Meditation. And I thought, I, you know, I could use some insight right now. And I see that it's written by these two Buddhists named Sharon Salzberg and <laughs> Joseph Goldstein. And I pick it up, and I take it home, and I start practicing. And I'm like, I can get into this meditation. Like, it, it, it gives me a handle on, like, all of the crazy, neurotic Jewish stuff happening in my mind and connecting to my breath. And, I, you know, I'm just feeling all these wonderful feelings of bliss. And then I start to do my research, and I find out there's, like, a long tradition of Jews that have turned far east of Jerusalem for their spiritual sustenance. Uh, I read this book called The Jew and the Lotus, and uh, that's where I heard the term for the first time, Jew-boo. Have y'all heard this? Jew-boo, Jewish Buddhist. And I was like, I started to discover Allen Ginsberg, the famous beat poet, was a Jew, right? Shout out. Um, you might not know this, but the late Adam Yauch, Ad Rock in the Beastie Boys, I see heads nodding, was a devout Buddhist. And Tara Brock, who leads like the biggest insight meditation community here in DC, like 300 people show up, also a Jew, just saying. So I was really captivated <laughs> with this legacy, right? This Jew boo thing. I sign up to go uh, to a 10 day silent meditation retreat north of San Francisco at this place called Spirit Rock. And the teachers on this retreat, like, just coincidentally, were Jack Cornfield, Joseph Goldstein, who wrote the Insight and Meditation book, and Sylvia Boorstein. Uh, she's like a little Jewish grandmother, and she wrote this book called That's Funny, You Don't Look Like a Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting in the meditation hall and, and I love Sylvia Borstein like she just reminds me of my bubby Sylvia but like a lot less crazy from all the meditation and she, she has this way of weaving into her Dharma talks these beautiful Jewish stories from her childhood and quotes from the Old Testament and as I'm listening to her talk I'm like you know what it's fully possible to be both Buddhist and Jewish at the same time, and that can be a seamless thing. And so I realized, like, maybe I never found my tribe in the north of Israel in Sfat, but I did find my chosen people in the north of San Francisco, San Rafael, 
And my people are the Jew Boos. Thank you. Thank you.